Hello and welcome to another video and podcast from Fancy Football Scout as we look ahead to the 23-24 season. Uh, my name is Joe and I, today I'm we are looking at the promoted sides, Sheffield United in particular, and I'm joined by Fancy Football Scout Deputy Editor Tom Freeman. Tom, welcome. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, Joe. Yeah, um, it was like we're really gearing up for the new season now on the site. Loads of pre-season coverage, friendlies have started to happen. Yeah tracking all the minutes, reporting on all the games. So, yeah, it feels pretty exciting. And um, we've obviously covered all of these new promoted sides in detail yeah. on site, but now we're getting around to the video and yeah. a few developments have happened since then. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, it, se it seems like only yesterday, yesterday that my own uh, club, Brighton, were one of these promoted, newly promoted sides. So you can be a promoted side and be in there for quite a while. There are obviously a number of Premier League sides that have done that, but you can also just slip back down again. Um, and um, I know there's there's not a lot of faith in Luton, but I think I've got a sneaky feeling Luton are going to be our second favourite team. There's something quite endearing about their stadium and uh, and uh, hopefully and and their and their amazing tail of uh, promotion. Also, Burnley, a completely different outfit with Vincent Company at the helm. So no more Deitch ball, more company ball. And um, Sheffield United, yeah, a bit of an unknown quantity for a lot of people, um, um, but not for seasoned FPL managers who remember their last time. Uh, overlapping centre-backs. Um, they were great the first season. Um, they were up, but then it all sort of fell apart again. Um, but there's a, some familiar names, as we'll discuss, um, that we might know as FPL managers. Um, but before we um, look at you know their tactics and their formation, I've just got the fixtures up on the screen. I'll just run through them quickly, just to see if we want interest in them. Well, we probably perhaps do early on they play crystal palace at home that's their first game that could be that could be lucrative for them nottingham forest away um which is another good fixture then they got city um which is a tough one obviously um everton next up uh for them another good fixture tottenham newcastle gets tough again west ham could be could get a result there maybe uh, and for them they got fulham so over the first eight there's a bit of a mishmash but there's probably more favorable fixtures than unfavorable ones so um they are on our radar, aren't they? Um, but yeah, what can we expect from Sheffield United? What what sort of what sort of team are coming up? What what are their tactics? Um, what can we expect as FPL managers? Yeah, so um, I had the pleasure of when we put the pieces together. I had the um, pleasure of speaking to um, two Sheffield United fans. The first yeah. being uh, Ben Meakin, who's the um, creator and host of Blades Pod, mm -hmm. and also FPL Blade, who um, is Planet FPL's correspondent, and yeah. they sent quite a lot of really good insight into the tactics and the personnel. So the default formation that Sheffield United use is a 3-5-2, mm -hmm. which is really similar to the one that Chris Wilder used when they were last in the Premier League. Um, and neither of the, the two contributors that I spoke to think they will deviate from that. It's, it's, okay. it's set in stone. It's their go-to system. I think on very occasionally they would switch to a back four late in the game last year in certain circumstances but I think we can expect this 3-5-2 formation at least initially next season to stick and be the go-to system and um, you mentioned just then the overlapping centre-backs mm. Joe which yeah. they did last time now they don't quite do that now but um, in one of their players whose pronunciation I will no doubt get wrong but I will attempt it in Ahmed Hodzik yeah. um, he still gets forward a lot Okay. Um, that's one of the outer centre, he's the right sided out centre back. And um, he actually kind of sometimes bypasses the right wing back. He will get that far forward. Um, oh. yeah, the good record. We'll talk about it in a bit when we go on about the defenders. Well, but he... Actually, I'll put, I'll put a picture up. Just I'll come back to this picture of the, of the 3 5 2. But I'll just put up a yeah. heat map of uh, Arm Hodzic's um, uh, uh, positioning. And it shows that he is he's not just a centre back. It, the, the red glow for those listening uh it's like those old uh you know um commentaries for snooker for those watching in black and white that, that ball is pink um this it, it the heat map he's red hot all up the right wing and Ooh. also he's got little little dots of red uh in the penalty area as well so that's exactly what you're saying so it's in picture form what you just said 
Yeah, he's a real threat from set pieces, so he goes up for those. He scored six goals and got two assists last season, so really impressive for a centre-back. He was in the Championship Team of the Year. Um, so, so yes, they're not doing the overlapping centre-backs that they did under Wilder, but this is still a player which um, I think will make an impact in the final third. Um, it may have to be reined in in the Premier League. They're not going to be one of the top teams. So that, that heat map, you might see him withdraw a bit, but I still think... It's 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 a it's part of their approach. So I think that he that he will get forward plenty. Okay. Um, so that's really interesting. He's probably the defender, which um, which I'd be looking at the start um, okay. if you were going to invest and you want to play your Sheffield United defender because there is a cheaper one still, which we'll talk about in a bit. But um, okay, yeah. So yeah, he's four point five uh, million. Okay. So from what you've just described, um, that's a fair price for him. Yes, I think so, and I. He was he was a player that I was looking out for when the prices were revealed. Now, the problem is with the pricing this year is that we can get a player like Botman for four point five from a Champions League defence who kept joint most clean sheets last season. So now that raises the question: Do we even need to be looking at Sheffield United defenders? Well, perhaps not at the start, but there might be times during the season when we do. For instance, if they have double game weeks or they have a good run of five or six fixtures. Um, and the last time Sheffield United came up in that first season, you mentioned it, Joe, they did really well. They had Dean Henderson goal, they had Lundstrom, of course, and there was value to be had. So I wouldn't rule it out completely. I don't think he'll be in many game week one teams, but he might be a player which appears on the radar at some point. Definitely. Um, so, so, I mean, in, in the setup that, that we've got here, well, I mean, we'll come to players uh, in a sec, but we've got um, George Baldock um, there on the right wing. Now, he is four million, isn't he? Yep, you're exactly right. Yeah, he's four million. Um, he's defensively solid. Um, he is not a great crosser of the ball. He tends to get into quite advanced positions and um, perhaps doesn't make the most of it all the time. But he's four million pounds. Now, there's been loads of chat in the community about is he a starter or, or will Bogle threaten his minutes? He's 4.5. My understanding is that Bolock will start the season. Um, most of the spoken to think that he he will be first choice to begin and and, and Bogle will perhaps come on as a substitute after okay. 75 80 minutes or something like that when he starts to tire so I think given what we now know with Burnley and Luton Town and the fact that they blank in game week two Bulldog might pick, pick up a yep. bit of interest the, the kind of the go-to four million um defender because there isn't much choice there is there so no, well, um, um I mean I've got um, I mean, I've done a few team reveal videos this week, but one of the things I've been talking about is I've started to move to two four million defenders on my bench because if uh, we've got a couple that are starting, I don't I don't want to play them, but you know if they can get me the odd point or two, and if what you're mentioning about Bulldog, if he's um, perhaps being subbed at maybe the seventieth eightieth minute, well, you might even get a clean sheet out of him. Um, yeah. and of course, you've got uh, Bayer. Uh, Burnley and um, we've got a Burnley video and we've got Burnley uh, uh, articles as well and podcasts um, so we need um, so they're having those two could be could be it's a bit of a risk but could be but but it's some, something for people to consider as they're looking to get their first drafts together yeah if you're a manager who tends to play a wild card and maybe quite early you know game week four something like that then you might that might get you through until that point yeah. having so, those it's a really polite way of saying your first draft needs wild carding already <laughs> no not necessarily so I think, I've, I think i've started with two four millions before i'm not in recent times but i'm sure i've done it in the past so um i wouldn't rule it out immediately there's loads of value at the back this year but yeah. um yeah, you know, so, but yeah, okay. those are probably the two players which we touched on then at the back that you probably want to be looking right. um, okay. at. Right. A little bit a little bit further forward, they um, so they play the 3-5-2 with the wing backs, they play three central midfield players. Mm -hmm. They ended the season um, with Sander Bursch, who FPL managers will remember from, mm -hmm. he, he signed in the January window when they were last year, and he kind of replaced Lundstrom in the team. Mm -hmm. um, so Sander Bursch plays on the right side of that three, and then they've played, um, or they finished the season with Doyle and Makate. Now, the only problem with that is that these were Man City loanies and they're no longer. So that is a big part of the, the system and the way they play has been taken out. Okay. They're going to have to replace that. They've signed a new midfielder, um, Slimane, who might slot into one of those positions. But um, that would be a concern for me that um, a key part of the success of that team was those two Man City players in the second half of the season, at least. And they're not around anymore. 
OK. Um, and so, we'll, I mean, we'll come to the players both in defence and attack in a bit. But um, but in, in, what, in, in terms of um, looking at clean sheets, I guess, um, um, so looking at, so sort of moving on gradually to their defence, but looking at what their, what is their potential. Now, I'll put some stats up on the screen um, showing that um, home, um, they scored 47 goals um, and they conceded 19. And then away, I think I've got this right here, uh, they, they um, it was 26 goals for, so obviously much less, so it shows that they're better attacking uh, at home. But broadly the same away, 20 um goals so that shows they're not it's not it sounds like unlike what people have been saying about Luton for example or or people have said about Brentford that's borne out is that there's distinct home advantage there's potential for clean sheets at home and less away but it, so, it sounds that there's they're pretty even Stevens when it comes to home and away they were in the championship and they were they were really solid um yeah like it when teams come up and they play a back three because it can transition it to a back five if they're you know i do quite like it when they come up playing that and they were actually i'm not sure what stats you've got on screen joe but we spoke about it in the piece where they were they were second for attempts from counter attacks and third for attempts from set plays now those kind um, being good at those things is very good when you're coming up um, from the championship because you're going to have less possession you be good on the counter attack but going back to the defense yeah they were very solid um i think they conceded the second fewest goals 39 in total yeah um only luton and burnley had a lower xgc so they're probably in terms of the expected data they were third best defense yeah 19 clean sheets i think so yeah. i think there's potential in the home games when they get a good run where they they, they could be quite tricky to break down, I think. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's it, it, certainly that they're, they're quite a solid defence home and away uh, and certainly capable of w- more likely to win at home um, than away, according to that. Um, so, yeah, looking at looking at their defence um, and the sort of the clean sheet potential, looked at that there. Um, but in terms of the players, I mean, this is so what we're looking for is so if we, we're looking for sure starters who have possibly got some assist and or goal threat um and because obviously with clean sheets anyone who plays has got equal chance of the clean sheet but um that's what we're looking for so we've already mentioned Amahodzic and the role that he plays and the stats I've got on, on the screen are for the appearances goals and assists for those uh, defensive players and Amahodzic they're 32 appearances two just two, sub just twice um, six goals, as you mentioned earlier, but a, and a couple of assists. There's eight goal involvements, um, which is absolutely great for a 4.5 centre back for a promoted side um, in the Championship. But will he better replicate that in the Premier League? You would hope so if you want to invest um, in him. But who else is is worth considering um, in terms of those uh, defensive players? I certainly think Aman Holchik is the player that you want to be looking at I think, okay. out of that back one. If you're going to spend 4.5 and you're going to play them, the, mm-hmm. the only thing I will say, he was a bit of a yellow card magnet last year. I think he got 12 yellow cards. So that's just something to bear in mind. Okay. Um, if you weren't going to look at him, then I think the £4 million pound bold up, um, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think that will be easier to fit into a lot of squads. Mm-hmm. Now, Another interesting player who has come in is they've just signed La Russi, um from France on loan, and that was announced yesterday. Okay. Now, we think he might take over from low at left wing back. Um, Liverpool fans might remember him. He, he, he spent a period with Liverpool, La Russi, okay. a few years back when he was younger. Um, he's a very front footed player. Um, quick likes to attack, get forward lots from that left wing back role. Now he's probably going to come in at four point five. Um, so I don't know whether I'd elevate him um, above Ahmed, Ahmed Hodgson, but then I think that it's just something to be wary of. You can watch him in the friendlies, yeah. see what his role is, see how far he's getting forward. But certainly, I think those two that we spoke about. There's the goalie as well, Fodringham. He's yeah. four point five. Um, he's a comfortable keeper. I don't think he's in the same class as Dean Henderson, who was yeah. the keeper they came out last year. But um, potential to make saves. Yeah, he's 40 starts, so yeah, he was the nailed-on goalkeeper. Um, one assist as well, always good to see. Um, 
that. So that previously uh, can, can be quite handy with a pass or two, uh, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I know I was seeing, seeing some rumours that Tom Heaton from Manchester United may go to Sheffield United. Um, I don't know if there's any strength in those rumours, but if so, um, he is a familiar name um, to FPL managers and could, um, you would assume, if he was brought in, would replace Fodderingham. Yeah, because that was um, that kept popping up in the preview pieces we ran, and the fans were saying that foddering. I mean, a lot depends on finances with Sheffield United. They're not in a great place. There's takeover talk. Yeah. They were placed under a transfer embargo earlier this year, so a lot is to do with funds. But um, they were saying that a Fodderingham upgrade could happen if um, the right opportunity presented itself during okay. uh, during the summer. OK, um, uh, centre back, you've got John Egan. He remember remember him from last time yeah. they were up. Uh, 44 starts, I mean, nailed as you like there. Uh, a couple of goals and an assist. So an- another potential at 4.5, obviously a bit less than some of the the, uh, the players we were mentioning in terms of our yes. interest. But... Yeah, I remember him from, from last time, from kind of Project Restart. I think he popped up in a few teams and things like that. But yeah, I don't really see... He's quite reliable, Egan, but I don't think he's probably got enough of that kind of attacking threat to put him ahead of the others. Another player that has popped up, I know his name, is Norrington Davis. Now, okay. he's four minutes. And a few people have been saying, is he a potential starter? But he's been injured for a long time now. I think it's eight or nine months. Ah. I would want to see him featuring in some friendlies consistently mm-hmm. um, before the season starts to even consider him. Because there was some talk that he could come possibly in as that left-sided centre-back. Okay. Um, place Robinson but that feels like it's not going to be something which is imminent but but one to monitor maybe definitely um I'm just looking at sort of the starts as well so we mentioned Egan there Bulldog and um, Hodzic um uh, as as those that have started a lot uh, of games um also got um Jack Robinson as well to 25 starts a couple of sub appearances um it says it's down as a center back and a wing back I mean is he someone we should be considering no, I don't think so, because I don't think he'll get that left wing back spot because right. they've just signed Larry. Yeah, they've yeah. got Max. Yeah. So I think he'll be that left sided centre back and he doesn't get forward as much as the right sided centre back. So, no, I think that if he was four million, then you could possibly discuss it. But at 4.5, I don't see any reason okay. to go there. So he's been sort of sharing. If Max Lowe as well is on the left wing, um, you would assume they've been sharing minutes because it's 20, 25 appearances for, for Robinson, 24 for Lowe. That indicates that's not a safe FPL pick for us. Yeah, yeah Norrington Davis started the season and, went in, and playing in those kind of positions as well. So I think that certainly the ones that we mentioned at the beginning, um, Amatodzik, mm-hmm. Oldock, if you want to go down to four, mm-hmm. um, they're, they're the two, I think, from that back line. If you want to start the season with somebody, that's who I, oh, okay. I'd be looking at. Yeah. And Jaden Bogle, just to clarify, Bogle is the... Um, the threat to Bulldog's minutes. Exactly. Okay. Yes. And we think Bulldog will start, but it wouldn't be surprised me in games if he's, he's, he's a replacement um, okay. after 70, 80 minutes, something like that. Um, and get Kieran Clark from uh, that Newcastle's Kieran yeah. Clark, I presume, was there for um, seven starts, three sub appearances. Um, I don't know whether that was the beginning or the end of the season, but he's got he's gone back to Newcastle. But any chance of him going back? I mean, did he impress at all? heard anything about it no. um so yeah not not on not on the radar at the moment i don't think okay um and just looking before we move on to attack anything else we should mention about um the defense i mean i think we've covered a lot of the key names there yeah no i think that's that's kind of rounded it up and um yeah i mean they might be a defense that you can you can play these guys in home games i think um i mean there is some when I look at the fixtures, Joe, I think there's yeah. three good fixtures in the, the first four. Yeah. Um, I think Everton at home and I think Forest away. It does get trickier after that. Yeah. Um, but Baldock, if you go in with him as a 4.0, you could probably play him in, in, in one or two of those early fixtures. Well, it was, uh, if you have. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying, thinking about, you know, you know, just savings for in the in the, in a first draft. Um um, a lot, of, obviously, for good reason. I've seen Botman as first sub in a number of teams, four point five. Looking at Newcastle's fixtures, um, they've got Aston Villa to start. Okay, but Aston Villa, I think, only failed to. I mean, your team, you should know, um, they only failed to score once under um, 
Emery? It's very, very well. Yeah, we carry a lot of attacking so, threats. So, um, can't, so, so can't see a clean sheet. For, yeah. Uh, and, and then Newcastle got Manchester City and Liverpool and Brighton. Um, and then and then Brentford. So I can't I can't see many any clean sheets there. It's not until they play Sheffield United in game week six. So um, um, if you're comparing a four point zero starter, that's if Bulldog is starting with the Sheffield United defence, is probably as good, bizarrely, as Botman in those early fixtures in terms of trying to get a clean sheet. Absolutely, yeah. And if you are going to wild card around that fixture swing for Newcastle, that would be the time to go for him. Probably not to start the season because you're going to yeah. have four points on the bench. You're not going to want to play him at all. No. So he's appearing, he's appearing in a lot of drafts, but it depends on your strategy. If you play, if you're going to play a later wild card and you want to get till kind of game week nine, ten, then all by all means start with him. Yeah. But if you're not, if you're not wanting to do that, I can see and definitely see the appeal of going with somebody a bit cheaper who could step in in the first five game weeks, which yeah. I don't think you really to do no indeed um so let's have a look at their attack then um because there's once again changes there and there's a particular player that i know uh, that you'll mention who ordinarily um would be their star player we should all be getting him in lots of goals lots of assists lots of appearances ticks all the boxes but unfortunately he might not be there so uh and die uh, in attack 43 starts um, 14 goals, 10 assists. Great. But he might not be there. So what's the latest with him? Yeah, well, he got the, I think it was uh, late last week, he got linked with this move to Marseille, which mm. would be such a blow for Sheffield United because he really is their, their star man. Yeah. See it there, 14 goals, 10 assists um, coming up from the championship. He played at the World Cup with Senegal. Mm. He's got strength. He's a good dribbler with the ball, good finisher. And the Sheffield United fans, quite a few of them, um, have been saying he's the best ever player they've seen playing for the club. They think that highly of him. Wow. So, And that is, that is even fans in their 50s and 60s who have been following the club for a long, long time. And so when 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 fans are saying that, you really take note of that. It's not always the best striker okay. at the club now. He's one of the best players they've ever had at the club. Okay. Uh, there's a chance if he's at the club that he could be on penalties as well because Norwood missed a couple last year. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they I think I'm right in saying they didn't have one um since then. So there is some talk that he could take on penalties, and he's only 5.5, but it's just this trap that you know, I was looking at him as a, a genuine yeah, option to yeah. start the season. But it's this Marseille link which is um, bothering me. And we're going to have to see how that develops. <laughs> Maybe he'll come out and he'll sign a new contract or something like that. And that will kind of put those fears to rest. But for now, it feels a little bit risky. OK, and in terms of the other strikers that they've got, uh, McBurney. So they've been playing this this three five two. mcburney has been uh, uh, playing alongside him. But I mean, in terms of starts, 25 starts. So and dai has been the, the mainstay. Um, and whoever partners him has been has been switching around by the looks of these uh, starts and sub appearances. So McBurney, thirteen sub appearances, twenty five starts. Nevertheless, thirteen goals and a couple of assists. Um, you would have, if and I goes, then McBurney sounds like the next best thing. But that sounds like it's like a, there's a big big old drop off. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think Undai is the player who is maybe a touch more withdrawn and kind of links to the midfield, to the attack. And then McBurney is that yeah. more your target man profile yeah. of... He was actually shooting more regularly than Undai last season. Okay. Uh, but I think there's there's obviously a drop-off in quality with, with him. I mean, I think I actually owned McBurney for a bit last time when they were in the Premier League mm -hmm. and he shoots a lot, but he, but he struggles to convert those shots yeah. quite a bit. Um, he will drop deep a little bit sometimes to link play, um, but I do think there's there's a there's, yeah there's a bit of a lack of quality with him as a, a, a Premier League level. So I think Unde is the player that we want to be looking at, but we need assurances. What we don't want to do is start the season with him and then two weeks down the line him to be transferred, yeah. um, and that's going to force it force problems for us. So we need some clarity on that situation. But if he's a Sheffield United player, um, I like him. Um, okay so i mean in terms of other strikers a familiar name billy sharp um 14 starts a bit and, and 24 sub appearances um i mean is he still there how old is he now <laughs> uh, he's been he's been released i was oh. watching and i think last last weekend i think yeah. it was 
he wanted to stay at the club and I think Heckingbottom wanted him to stay at the club. So I can only think that it's a financial reason that they've decided to offload him, which is a little bit worrying. Um, but his, his experience in the dressing room could have been quite useful. Yeah. Um, so I think Sharp's gone. So I think it's probably Bruce Sturr, who FPL fans again will be familiar with, yeah. um, former striker big money move and hasn't really done much no. to be honest no he was a, a huge in- money wasn't it from liverpool and it was well over 20 million wasn't it yeah you're right yeah so and it's, it's never really happened for him injuries have, have kind of mm. been you know he's, he's picked up so many niggles and knocks and he seems to come back and then he's injured again and there's another young guy called jebison as well but okay. um they're all backups at the moment while and days there it's him and mcburney are the, the, right. the front two partnerships there is a lot of talk of a new striker coming in to potentially replace McBurney, but but nothing yet. Okay, um, so um, so you mentioned about the financial situation. Um, my understanding: Sheffield United are on the cusp of new ownership, possibly, and things are up in the air at the moment. So, is that where the money issue is? Is they're not sure how much money they've got? Yeah, I think so. Like I said earlier, they were under a transfer embargo, I think, in January for missing payments to other clubs. And um, as soon as they came up, we we thought it it wasn't going to be anything like the last time they, they came up when they could kind of splash the cash a little yeah. bit. It's it, They've got to be really clever in the transfer market with loans. Mm-hmm. Um, which is which, uh, and cheap signings from abroad, and that's what we're seeing at the moment. But it's it's going to be very very difficult for them, I think, especially losing those two Man City midfielders who were so key for them. If they could get there was talk of them getting Doyle back. I don't know where that's at at the moment, but that would obviously be a massive boost for them if they could at least get one of them. Okay, so um, as it stands at the moment in terms of strikers, we've got Ndai as the clear favourite, but he might not be there. And if he's not there, and if he's the guy that links play with the main striker, who is indeed someone that they're looking to perhaps replace as a sure starter, um, uh, you know, with the 25 starts in the, even in the Championship, McBurney doesn't sound like the guy they need to lead the line every week in, week out in the Premier League. It sounds like... Not only they're a no go, but that's a big worry. <laughs> um, if they're going into it without any sort of quality up front, and by quality I mean Premier League quality and FPL quality. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and if Unday leaves, I think they're an absolute avoid. Um, <laughs> but if he's playing for them, I think he could be. I think he could be an okay pick at five. You know, you've got to think of the price five point five. Yeah. What does he put elsewhere? Everybody's going with Haaland, or at least. 99% of managers are going with Haaland. So that's a lot of people are going 3 5 2. So it's that second striker spot. Do you go for somebody like Gabby Jesus at £8 million or Ollie Watkins or something like that? Or do you drop a little bit and do you go for somebody like a £6 million player or on day at 5.5 mm. if he's still there? And then just go a little bit bigger in, um, in midfield okay. and um, maybe add a second Arsenal midfielder over somebody like um, Uwema or something like that. So. That's what you've got to weigh up. But um, I do like with Day. I like that you've got that goal threat and you've got that assist potential. You know, 10 assists in the championship. And this yeah. isn't fantasy fantasy assists in there. No. We're going to get fantasy assists as it's well. A proper you know, championship assists. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like two or three and uh, added on to that tally. And then suddenly you get up towards 30 goal involvements last season. Mm. And... I, I like that and um, I, I like it with the newly promoted sides that I sometimes think what you, you think of that first match under the lights or whatever, the fans, the excitement are back in the Premier League. I think you can sometimes tap into that and sometimes they start well and then they tail off a little bit after that. But yeah, on day for that, for that Palace at home match, for the Everton at home match, if, he, if he's happy, he's content and he's there, he could do, he could be okay. OK, just before we move on to the midfielders, um, I'll just sort of wrap up and die there. 14 goals, 10 assists. McBurney, 13 goals and a two assists. Other strikers, Billy Sharp, no longer there, unfortunately. Um, but he did get a couple of goals and an assist. Uh, Jebison is another option, a goal and two assists. That's in the championships. So that um, just five starts, so it doesn't bode well for investment there. Uh, Ryan Brewster he's been there for a while and he's he only managed five starts um one goal one assist um that's that's poor for a, a, a 20 20 million plus man um and then um you got uh redra kadra um but it was a low knee um and has to return to his parent club but he managed four assists 
and 11 sub appearances um so you know scored a goal did a job um yeah it, it, it's not and die all eyes on and die um basically yep. um in terms of midfield um i guess norwood is on penalties a used to uh, former brighton player um and international and you know he's got a, a strong record um, but really at a championship level, not really a, a exciting in the Premier League. So he's very, with 32 starts, um, five assists, a couple of goals, um, an option. But, I mean, will he, will he start? And is he an option for us? He had quite an intriguing season, Norwood, because he started the season playing for Sheffield United and he was playing very well. He actually ended up in the championship team of the year, mm -hmm. even though he lost his place to Tommy Doyle yeah. in the second season. Okay. Um, I think Heckingbottom at the time said he wanted more legs, he wanted more energy in midfield, which is why they made the change. Norwood is more of your creator type. He's a bit more of a playmaker, good on set pieces. But I think because of the situation with them losing Doyle and Makate, I think suddenly probably is a starter for okay. them at the moment. Um, he's five million. Yeah, I probably wouldn't go there because I don't think that there's necessarily. I don't think he's nailed on in that position. Players might come in, so I think he's probably in a void for now. He missed the last couple of penalties he's taken, yeah. so there's no guarantee he's going to stay on them. Okay. Um, but again, if he's starting games because he's on set pieces and he is a creator, it wouldn't surprise me if he got an assist in the first few yeah, weeks. I mean, but... I, I mean, he sounds like he's been overpriced. He should be four point. He's, he's, he's at, we, there's a real lack of 4.5 million midfielders. Yeah. And, and this is this is the guy that should be it. Not quite certain he's going to start. Could be on penalties. Um, exactly. He, he could, could, could play. Um, 4.5 would seem reasonable for him. It's, it's such a shame because... When they're five, they're kind of they're, they're not options anymore. Yeah. If these guys would have been four point five, it would have unlocked more three four three formations. Yeah. So, and the same applies to another midfielder, Sander Burge, who's yeah. five million. Yeah. Like I put in the preview piece. If he was a four point five, mm. then he could have potentially been owned by a few people. But at five, it's very difficult to get excited about it. So, just going back, going back to the uh, formation. Um, so, Burge is. Um, uh, well, it, I mean, in midfield across that, across that, is he more defensive, more attacking? I mean, he, I mean, the, the six box. goals. Sorry, yeah, box, box. He's box to box. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, he's six foot five. He's a bit. He's he, he's he's a big physical presence. Okay. You just said that, though, six goals, five assists. Um, he carries the ball very well, from what I've what okay. I've seen. But again, if he's five million, so he's very hard to fit in, especially. <laughs> How, how appealing the three five two is, but so he, um, he, he could be a sort of a Suchek type type player, as in, yeah, yeah. not not going to get um, in the box a lot, but when he does at that height yeah. and that presence, and he, he could be could be a bit handy. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would put him probably above Norwood. I think just okay. because I think is I think he's probably got a bit more quality than him. I think he's a bit more locked in to start and he'll get naturally more forward because he's that right-sided central midfielder instead of in the holding role, which I think that Norwood would slot into. You know? Okay. So McAtee and Doyle, that, that's going to be a miss there. They've uh, obviously on loan, um, but also looking at other um, uh, midfielders, You've got John Fleck. I mean, any, I mean, 14 starts, just a goal and assist. That sounds like an avoid. I, I hope they've listed him at 4.5. If they haven't there, there might be something he's, up. He's played in a couple of the friendlies, Fleck mm. has, but they've signed um, Slimane last week, who has come in at 5 million. Now, he he's Tunisian. He played in the World Cup as well, and he is a box-to-box -box okay. player. Now, I haven't done a report on him or anything mm. yet, but my initial feeling is that he would come into the side in that left-sided midfield okay. role with possibly Burge to the right and then a holding player behind them. So that would then affect Fleck, who would be competing okay. for those number eight roles, I suppose. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm just looking, <clears throat> look at, put the formation back up on the screen there. We can see when McAtee and Doyle there, but won't be there. Um, and who's going to replace them? So it sounds like, uh, uh, is it Sl Slamani? Was it from? Yes. Yep. Uh, yeah. Um, so... so Fleck is five million too. So you know. <laughs> I don't know what's. I mean, 
It's funny, isn't it? I actually thought the pricing was quite good with FPL in that they created lots of decisions for us. You had a lot of choice in this midfield. They really upped the price of Haaland. Um, and, you know, there was there was value, but it was still tough to make. It's still tough to make a team. You still got to make sacrifices somewhere. But it's only really when we've been discussing these blatant 4.5 midfielders um, yeah. that can't even be guaranteed a start. Uh, for a promoted side, and they're five million. That I mean, it does that. That's off. <laughs> Especially when there's so many defenders from these teams who are four million who have come up, and they're and they're kind of um, yeah. especially it's things like that and Burnley. And um, but yeah, so it doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think if you want to go with a four point five midfielder, it's really difficult at the moment. Mm-hmm. The one who I think has probably got the best chance of starting he's not even been priced up by fpl yet and that's um Raksaki, the crystal palace winger okay. he was on loan at charlton last year and when their player of the season did very very well oh. olisi's got injury, and and once he's priced he's got to be i say he's surely got to be a 4.5 um surely he's got to come <laughs> in at five years then then he does get that 4.5 tag he could start the season okay. but that just normally playing fpl there's a few 4.5s yeah, aren't there options and that's what we're dealing with now we're talking about a player who hasn't even been priced up as the only real potential yeah. option yeah because sometimes so, you get you get i mean you obviously sometimes you get a standout um i remember yanazai at uh, manchester united uh, raheem sterling famously at liverpool was probably probably the best 4.5 midfield i've ever owned in my, in my time and um you get a standout but even so with those seasons as you said you've usually got like 10 others you can pick and last year we had Pereira as a standout but there was many other 4.5s yeah, that's my, my, we might be relying on something because, you know, Pereira was priced up as a Man United player last year and then yeah. he got the move. Yeah. We might be relying on something that this year rather than having an immediate option. Right, yeah. Upon its launch. So, yeah, I mean, we were we were kind of gifted Pereira last year. I mean, he's an incredible player, wasn't he? Yeah. You could You could start in 11 and play him a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, we probably won't be that fortunate next year, but let's see. Okay, so um, before we move on from the rest of the midfielders, I mean, I think I've named, we've gone through a lot of the key names. Unfortunately, those others are on loan. Um, there, I've got some other names here: Ben Osborne, um, just ten starts. Um, that doesn't sound like a player I particularly want to invest in. Um, not, not much else for us. Yeah, Osborne. Actually, we'll talk about the friendly in a minute. He did score at the weekend, Ooh, okay. playing played in one of those I think Fleck played the first half and I think Osborne came on as the left side in midfielder in the second okay. but he's not um he's not going to be nailed on in that team so okay. not an option. um you mentioned about pre-season as well so is there anything else to mention about pre-season is it is it looking indeed like he's playing a 3-5-2 yeah yeah they played, um, well they played Chesterfield at the weekend and they won 2-0 mm-hmm. um if you're interested in the pre-season results go and have a look on the, the the pre-season tab on the website because you've got every team you've got every friendly game we do we, we cover it we do a match report on every single friendly match involving a Premier League team check your goals and assists so basically I'm pulling the information direct from there this morning so yeah Sheffield United beat Chesterfield 2-0 at the weekend um Unday scored mm. and also as well um sander burge and bernie got the assists for that one mm-hmm. um we've got youtube on the match reports we've got little youtube clips where you can and you can actually watch the highlights from that match as well um, so yeah it was a 3-5-2 i'm looking at the formation now players we've discussed on here i mean with a lot of pre-season lineups right now joe you know what it's like yeah, there's yeah, a lot it's of early, youth, early days it's training a lot of youth team players but fodderingham started in goal Egan played at the back, um, Norwood was playing, Fleck was playing, Max Lowe was left wing back. And and they actually, they waited till the second half to bring on McBurney and Unday, but that obviously okay. made the difference. They could bring on that quality at half time. And uh, Sheffield United have got four more friendly games to play before game week one. They play Rotherham, uh, Girona, Derby and Stuttgart. So okay. loads of scouting. If you... That's a good. That's a good range as well. I mean, you've got the likes of Rotherham there, but obviously Stuttgart. You've got a bit of a bit of quality across Europe there. Um, so yeah, so they, they'll be. You would imagine by the end of that, you're going to get some idea of their lineup. Yeah, especially those last kind of couple of friendlies. That's normally when we start to get an idea. For example, Arsenal last year, the last two friendlies, they named the same lineup yeah. that started game week one. So 
we should know more then at the moment it's all a bit experimental it's using players which are available fitness but as we get closer to the kickoff we'll start to see what they've got planned the managers no. Excellent. Well, well, thanks so, so much for joining me, Tom. Um, it's given you an insight. I mean, I think out of all of the three sides, because I've already done a video um, uh, with uh, uh, Dan Ashby, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the Luton correspondent for Planet FPL, about about Luton, obviously a season ticket holder. I feel I feel a little bit clued up about them. Uh, Burnley, because of Vincent Company, I've been sort of keeping a bit of an eye on. So um, know, know the differences there. But Sheffield United, they have been a bit of a blank spot for me. And I think they might be for many other people as well so it's good for um good for us as fbi managers to really assess that and you mentioned about the pre-season there's a um a pre-season video uh, just come out this week did with mark um that's well worth a watch um there's um, stuff for members uh, of fantasy football so i do urge you to get consider the membership as well because you get uh, i know there's a discount at the moment and um, a whole bunch of stuff in there from uh, various tools and the rate my team um, algorithm experts behind the scenes. The AI, I'm going to call it AI, sort of. Um, yeah, it is AI. Um, and um, so you've got all of those. Uh, you've got all those tools at your disposal. But also the preseason minutes, and that's starting to get key. And this is where, as I know, David frequently says on these videos, this is where. John Lundstrom was discovered. <laughs> so uh, that's what we're looking for. It doesn't sound like we're going to get a John Lundstrom this time around from Sheffield United, but there may be some other gems. Um, but um, so um, thanks so much for your time. Um, everyone, do do remember to subscribe and do press that like button if you liked it. And even if you haven't liked it, just to press it anyway. And uh, so uh, uh, keep in touch with all our videos by subscribing as well. Uh, Tom, thanks so much for your time. Take care. See you soon. Yeah.